right here, humming away oh so quietly, is my brand new M1 Mac Mini. I've had this thing for about three months and it's awesome, I love it. But I'm having a little bit of regret because two weeks after this was delivered to my house, Apple announced this. So now, here's the question. Do I ditch this thing for the Mac Studio? Was it a huge mistake to buy this? Or do I stick with what I got? Now, like all my reviews, I'm gonna tell you what I love about this thing, what I don't love, and who I think it's for. All from the perspective of a professional photographer who puts this thing through a lot of heavy use. Now, before we get started, don't forget to subscribe or like if you like the content here, and check out my podcast. It's called Photobomb. I co-host it with my good friend, Boo Ray Perry, and it comes out every week. Just for the sake of perspective, let's talk about the computer that I'm coming from. I most recently owned a 2015 i7 iMac, which had 32 gigs of RAM and a two terabyte hard drive. Now, since 2015, this computer's been kicking butt for me doing just about everything I needed it to do. But when I started doing video and editing 4K, it was just not up to the task. It was eating up so many hours just transcoding footage and rendering stuff that I was just losing hours and hours a week. And as a business owner, time is money. So I knew it was time to make the jump. Now, the reason that I haven't replaced that computer since 2015 is because, well, Apple stopped making great computers for professionals right about that time. If you don't believe me, look at the sales numbers. Apple's sales of the Mac have been in steady decline since 2015, until recently. Once the new line of MacBook Pros, MacBook Air, Mac Mini, and the iMac started to get into the hands of people, the internet has just been exploding with how great they are. And so I fell down a really deep YouTube hole, doing a ton of research, listening to people that I trust, talking about these machines, and I became convinced that the Mac Mini was up to the challenge for what I needed it for. And I was right. So after three months of using this thing, let me tell you what I love about it. First, it's fast, like really, really fast for just the sort of base chip, not the Pro or the Max, not even available on this model. This thing is excellent. It uses all of the professional softwares I use on a daily basis, Photoshop, Lightroom, Bridge, Capture One, Audition, Final Cut, it just does a great job at running every single piece of software that I use on a daily basis without so much as a hiccup. I was absolutely blown away by how fast this thing is. The second thing I love about the Mac Mini is the footprint. It is beautifully designed, it is very unobtrusive, and it fits perfectly into my desk, which, by the way, I had to redesign just to accommodate the fact that I was moving from an all-in-one computer, the iMac, to a more desktop computer where I needed to have a whole bunch of extra stuff. And it gave me the opportunity to sort of redesign my desk into a very cool, minimalist kind of look that I've been loving a lot. The third thing I love about the Mac Mini is obviously gonna be the price, although that's not the determining factor in why I bought it. It just happens to be nice that I paid $1,500 for a fully maxed out Mac Mini that runs way better than the iMac that I got in 2015 that I paid $3,500 for. So let's talk about the things I don't love about the M1 Mac Mini. First of all, it's just not as customizable as I would like. The limitation specifically on the memory is kind of a problem. And although from day to day, I hardly ever run into the limit of what that 16 gigabyte max can do because this unified memory is just incredible. It performs a lot more like a computer with twice as much memory as it actually has. But man, I would just love to future-proof my computer a little bit by spending a few hundred bucks extra to get that memory. The second thing I don't love about the Mac Mini is gonna be the lack of ports. Now, there are some good ports on this thing, just not enough and not enough variety. And I've had to supplement it with a dock and a hub and some other stuff just to plug in all the peripherals that I use on a daily basis. Now, it's not the end of the world. There are some great looking accessories for the M1 Mac Mini, but you know, it's just one of those things if you go with this computer, you're just gonna have to make that sacrifice. Check out the description in this video and I will put links to the peripherals that I'm using to make sure I have enough ports on my M1 Mac Mini. The third thing I don't love about the M1 Mac Mini is the Bluetooth. Now I haven't been having nearly as many connectivity and distance and latency issues as other YouTubers have been reporting, but I do use a lot of Bluetooth devices and switching between them can sometimes cause a hiccup. And so about once a week, I actually have to restart the whole machine just to get it to start talking to Bluetooth devices properly again. Again, it is a very small thing and it's not a huge interrupter in my day-to-day -day workflow, but just so you're aware, it is a problem. And now I'm gonna tell you who I think this computer is for. 
And the answer might surprise you because it surprises me. It's got a broad range of appeal for entry-level users all the way up to pros. Pro photographers can get a lot out of this machine if you can get around the kind of lack of ports that it has. Once you've worked around that, this thing could really surprise you at how great it actually is. It can run Photoshop, Lightroom flawlessly, and I edit 16-bit TIFF files for printing and has no problem with that. I throw files at it 45 megapixels from the R5 and it has no problem with those. I edit hundreds or even thousand images at a time from corporate events and no problems whatsoever. So if you're just doing photography, and even if you're editing large jobs with lots of images to go through, this computer can do a great job and probably a better job than the computer you're using right now. Where I would say you would probably not want to get the Mac Mini is if you're relying heavily on producing video for your clients. Not because it can't do it, because it can. This thing will take the H.265 4K footage right off the R5 and edit it without making any proxy files. It does a really, really good job. But when it comes to the rendering, seconds equal minutes equal hours equal a lot of time and money for you. So if you're producing video, I would highly recommend going with something like the Mac Studio because that's just gonna give you a much faster rendering times. It's gonna give you a lot more power when you're putting a lot more work into the computer. So what do I do now? Do I ditch the M1 Mac Mini and get the studio? For right now, I think I'm gonna sit tight. I'm already past the return window on the thing and honestly, it's giving me zero problems and I don't edit enough video for any slowdown versus the Mac Studio to be significant. So the good news is, is that Apple's making great computers again for pros. And so I'm gonna sit tight and see what they do next. Thanks for watching.